My name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of File Cut Help. Today, we're going to do a placeholder effect, roughing out a basic composite effect that will then take into another application to finish off. A lot of times, you're going to do these right in the Final Cut timeline, just so you could figure out what shots you want to use and if it's going to be even feasible to accomplish what you think is there. Let's go ahead and do a placeholder effect here, right in the Final Cut timeline, really quick. So what I have here are two shots. We've got some content we're going to put on the television set and a TV that we shot. Now what we did here is we simply played back a digital file with a green file playing back to the TV, making it easy to do a chroma key. Let's go ahead and select that shot and choose Effect, Video Filters, Key, and now we'll do our key here. Now there's an important filter that a lot of people miss with keying in Final Cut, and that is color smoothing. You've got color smoothing 411, which is going to work well for DV material, and 422, which will work most well for any other type of professional footage. This particular footage here is DVC Pro HD, so I'm going to apply the 422 color smoothing. And then we'll choose Effect Video Filter Key and go back to the chroma keyer. Now, double click on the clip to load it. It comes on up, and it's working pretty well. I'll drop to unlimited RT here so I get some basic real-time features. And we'll go to the visual interface for the chroma keyer. Now this interface is very similar to the isolate command inside the three-way color corrector. We'll go ahead and click once with the eyedropper to make a selection. And then what I recommend is clicking on the mat icon here. If you click this once, you'll start to see the different results and you can isolate it. Now there we're starting to see what's happening. Let's pull this apart see what we're selecting, and we're selecting a wider range of green, and let's see if we need Luma. Now, it's not making much of a difference, so let's just accept a broader range of saturation. And you see that that starts to get picked up. That worked out well. We'll continue to take that open, and that's working well. Just open that up the rest of the way. There we go. A little bit more green. Good. Now, saturation a little too much, so notice there I'm just going to uncheck it and let's tighten that back up. Doing pretty well. Maybe we do want to do a little bit of luminance and we can play with those sliders until we pick up the range we want. That seems to be doing the trick there. And we just got a decent key. Now as we drag through the footage, you'll see he leans in. We get a little bit of variation and you can continue to play with that by just dragging those sliders out until you're happy. This is not meant to be a final key, rather just a placeholder until we've got the rough effect worked out. If you really want to see the transparency back there, you can actually change it here. You could say, instead of seeing RGB, you want to see alpha plus RGB. Makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. And we could play with that until we get the right values of the key. That looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and use that as a starting point. And let's put something back there. I'll drag this up to a new track, and behind it, we'll drop in another clip. Now this clip needs to be sized. It's definitely too big for what we're doing here. So no big deal. We can size that down. Let's go ahead and select that and apply a basic 3D effect. Inside the perspective category here, we'll go ahead and drag on basic 3D, and this will give us what we need. If we take a look here under the filter parameters, We've got the ability to adjust scale, so we can scale that down as needed until it fits the frame. We can move the center point to reposition that on the frame. And if necessary, to deal with any sort of angle within, you can actually rotate the clip a little bit side to side to deal with any distortion of the screen you're dealing with. So that works pretty well there. Now to soften that out, we can double click come on over here to the visual chroma keyer and just tighten the softening up and then adjust the edge thinning until we're happy with it. We could tweak that and what we have there is a good proxy effect that shows us that these two clips are going to work well together. If I wanted to make this work just a little bit better, I might jump on over to blur and grab my soft focus, drop it on the background clip there, and we could play with that focus until we're happy with the amount of blur. That looks pretty good. So, these are all set, and what I would do at this point is send it on over to a compositing tool like After Effects or Motion. If you're using Motion, piece of cake. You could just go ahead and click on those two shots, 
do a right click and say that you want to go ahead and send those over to a motion project where you can go ahead and finish out the key or hand it out to a graphic artist to do it for you. Hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Final Cut Help. We got lots more in the pike, so feel free to tune in each week and go ahead and head on over to creativecow.net where you can check out the Final Cut forums, post your questions, and make suggestions for upcoming episodes. Thanks again.